What's happening guys? Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So, before we get any go any further, I just want to let you guys know that there will be some spoilers in this episode. Um, not necessarily endings of matches or title changes or anything to that nature, but things that did happen during the latest Impact tapings. So, if you guys follow anything that's going on online, you probably know about this already, but just want to give you guys a heads up in case you have completely steered clear of any rumors or news or anything like that. So, start off, we uh, have an announcement that the April 22nd pay-per-view has changed its name from Lockdown to Redemption. Um, this change was brought because Anthem was against the idea of an all-cage pay-per-view. Um, I guess also considering the six sides is no longer... So, it kind of changes things up. Um, but there are rumors for the pay-per-view, or that the pay-per-view would take place in Toronto, but nothing is set in stone. I believe there was some talking that the dates they had planned for it, or the arena they had planned it for, was uh, already occupied on those dates. So, we're not sure about where it's going to take place, but PW Insider reports that if the pay-per-view doesn't take place... In Toronto, their backup plan is set to take place in Orlando at the Impact Zone. So we have a couple of injuries that had happened during the tapings. Um, this one wasn't actually related to what happened during the tapings, but Sienna was hospitalized. Um, she had taken to Instagram to tell what had happened. She said she was experiencing short labored breathing and severe back spasms, sharp pains at the top of her inhale. Um, so she had suspected it being a displaced rib or, worst case, a collapsed lung. Turns out she has a blood clot in each lung. So she won't be wrestling right now, but she'll still be making appearances. Um, wish her well. Hopefully this is not a long-term thing. Um... And one that did take place at the tapings was uh, Eddie Edwards was injured in a match. Uh, he actually had been struck in the head with a baseball bat. He had worked a match with uh, Sammy Callahan, and uh, apparently he got hit in the head, covered up, went to the back, and was bleeding everywhere. Uh, but he is all right. Eddie took to Twitter and said that, Thanks to everyone checking in. I'm good. A couple of bo broken bones, a couple of cuts, and a sweet black eye. Some days you're the bat, and some days you're my eye. <laughs> um, but that is that. So, um, But there is some good news, and the rumor going around is that Eddie Edwards is sticking with Impact Wrestling. Um, I guess they were supposed to negotiate contracts at this past set of tapings. Nothing has come out. Um, I believe his contract was up at the end of this month. So that is... A big plus if it is true but on the flip side we have learned there has been a handful of departures um so let's get into them the first one being ec3 uh not a huge surprise here we talked about this in great detail over the last month or so um as well as bobby lashley and laurel van ness uh Lashley has kind of done everything in this company, much like EC3, and it was rumored that Laurel Van Ness had asked for her release during the Canada tapings where she had won the Knockouts title. Um, but yes, they have all made their departures from the company. Um, EC3 is heavily rumored to appear at WWE as early as next weekend. Apparently, he was shown at the Performance Center, so that is that. And we actually have two more departures um one a very big surprise to a lot of people there uh which was chris adonis who had announced his departure last saturday um he had kind of taken to social media and just uh said uh i've come to turn i'm done with impact wrestling basically uh but adonis who was scheduled for the entire week of tapings left after the third night and thanked everyone uh they weren't completely sure what made him make that decision is he just left on his own and wasn't something they knew about in advance. Um, he had done an interview with, uh, I forget, some sort of channel guide magazine or whatever, and uh, he had said that 
you know, positive things about Impact, but kind of didn't want to just be in Eli's spotlight base, I mean, in the shadows, because um, that's kind of what they were doing. Uh, apparently, the two of them were supposed to work together further on, which that got changed to somebody else working with Drake, but I won't go into that. Um, and we also learned that Hania, who had actually debuted this past week on Impact Attacking Rosemary, um, has also left the company. Uh, when It was originally announced that she was fired due to not putting over other talent and refusing to work with talent. Um, a couple of knockouts had taken to Twitter to talk about this, not really in-depth, but kind of made mention. But Hania took to Twitter and said, So Impact and I came to a mutual decision, and there is absolutely no bad blood or hard feelings on either side. I'm thankful. Had a good time, even met some cool people. But immature people like to blow things out of proportion. Thanks again to everyone at Impact. So, that was uh, a little crazy. Uh, the fact that she had just debuted on TV, and this was announced, I think, the day of her debut. Uh, but this is a big problem with uh, recording so far in advance. I mean, the the latest episode was recorded back in November, so, and she still worked the whole taping, so she'll be wrestling up until sometime in April, um, but speaking of Impact, this week's Impact drew 309,000 viewers, which was up from last week's 276,000 viewers, I believe, and it ranked 136 out of Cable's top 150, so positive news for them, um, Especially on an episode where I think the majority of people knew that the Barbed Wire Massacre match was not happening due to what was being said online. Um, Impact really didn't make it known that it was going to be on Twitch until the last minute. Um, but speaking of Twitch, the I Impact Wrestling has released a press release for the Twitch deal. And it says, the Impact Wrestling channel on Twitch will feature exclusive content, including monthly live events and house shows featuring top stars in professional wrestling. The release continues, the channel will also feature lifestyle programming showcasing Impact Wrestling stars outside of the ring, from diets and workouts to relationship and travel. Twitch will also air Impact Wrestling's live event at WrestleCon in New Orleans, Louisiana on Friday, April 6th at 9 p.m. Central Time. So, great news. Um, I, I love that they're going to be doing live events and house shows. Um, they were actually here on Long Island back in August, and I made the stupid decision not to go, which I really should have gone. Um, but I'm hoping they come back around here again. Um, and yeah, that's some cool stuff with uh, kind of outside of the ring with the diets and workouts, like they said. Uh, we also saw the Barbed Wire match debut on Twitch, and that did pretty well. I think they had about 10,000 viewers, which was the number I was hearing and saw on my uh, screen. But good things to come. They're making the right moves, moving in the right direction. The departures are just because Impact is cutting these big contracts. I think the biggest contract underway right now is Alberto El Patron. And uh, he had actually done an interview recently saying that he still plans to go back to WWE in some sort of fashion, which is mind-boggling after everything that had gone on. He said he apologized and everything was caused by Paige's family. I think bringing him back to Impact was a mistake. Um, I hope they can salvage this, get him on his way after everything, cut his contract, whatever. I'm not a fan. This is my personal opinion. Don't think he's a draw, but like I said, my own opinion. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.